In a previous video, we saw that pure lime-based mortars offer binding properties by precipitating calcium carbonate from the reaction of their calcium hydroxide with CO2 present in the air. This is however not effective for large elements because the transport time of CO2 becomes exceedingly slow. In this video, we will see that adding amorphous silicates or reactive aluminosilicate minerals overcomes this limitation thanks to a chemical reaction that does not require contact with air. The compounds used are referred to as pozzolans, a name derived from the Italian town of Pozzuoli, near which volcanic ash was sourced for this during the Roman Empire. Apart from such volcanic ash, crushed bricks were also used historically and have since been complemented by other pozzolanic materials as calcinclase, silica fume, and fly ash. In general, pozzolans can be defined as materials that react with lime in the presence of moisture to form cementitious binding hydrates. The Roman Empire made extensive use of pozzolanic mortars and concrete, and it is the very good mechanical performance and durability of these materials that accounts for many of the still standing monuments as the Pantheon, the Theatre of Marcellus, Trajan's Markets, the Pont du Gard, and to a lesser extent, the Colosseum. Importantly also, pozzolanic mortars provide unique construction possibilities for marine structures. The Romans used them to cast large underwater elements directly on the seabed to build harbors like Portus Lullius and Baia, which are still preserved more than 2,000 years after their construction. However, it should be noted that pozzolanic mortars had already been discovered in ancient Greece and that their use is well documented in Crete. By definition, pozzolans are materials that react with calcium hydroxide and water to produce a hydrated phase. Their chemically active compounds are reactive amorphous silicates or aluminosilicate glasses or a mixture thereof. To explain the pozzolanic reaction, the easiest and most basic way is to consider an amorphous silica as pozzolana. With this, our reaction can be written as X moles of calcium hydroxide plus one mole of silica plus Y minus X moles of water react to produce one mole of calcium silicate hydrate, noted CaOx, SiO2, H2O, Y. In modern cement chemistry, we use C for CaO, H for H2O, and S for SiO2. This means that calcium hydroxide would be noted as CH and that the above reaction would be written as X CH plus S plus Y minus X H gives CX S H Y. The values of X and Y can vary depending on the circumstances, which is why we usually note calcium silicate hydrate as C S H. One well-documented case of CSH is found in modern cement with values of X and Y being respectively 1.7 and 4. This gives 1.7 CH plus S plus 2.3 H gives C 1.7 S H4. In the more general case, aluminates will also be incorporated into this hydrate, which is then a calcium aluminum silicate hydrate noted cash and where A stands for Al2O3. To understand the binding capacity of this reaction, let us convert its stoichiometry, given in moles, to one given in volumes. We then have that one volume of calcium hydroxide, plus 0.48 volumes of silica, and 0.73 volumes of water, react to form 2.03 volumes of calcium silicate hydrate. A first observation is that the total volume decreases by 8% from a total of 2.21 to 2.03. This corresponds to chemical shrinkage and mainly results in porosity within the hardened material. Much more importantly, and crucial to all mineral binders, 
is the fact that the solid volume increases from left to right. In this case, it increases by 37%, passing from the 1.48 of the combined calcium hydroxide and silica to the 2.03 of the final CSH. This is much more than the 7% associated to the carbonation of lime and is an important reason for the better binding properties of Roman mortars. Most importantly, the Pozzolanic reaction, unlike the carbonation of lime, is not limited by mass transport. The hardening rate of an object therefore does not depend on its size, which is what allowed the Romans to produce strong, large and long-lasting structures. It should be noted that to obtain a workable mortar or concrete, more water is needed than required by the chemical reaction. This strongly affects the porosity. For example, doubling the water content causes the final porosity to increase from 8 to 31%. This decreases the strength of the final material and can cause cracking from drying shrinkage. This problem can be partially mitigated by adding sand and aggregates to produce mortars and concrete. In doing so, one seeks to maximize the amount of sand and aggregates in a mix by optimizing their grain size distribution to allow the smaller particles to pack within the gaps left by the larger ones. This is also something that the Romans had well understood and optimized for. Thereby, through careful craftsmanship and control of material technology, the Romans spread the use of Pozzolan lime mortars and concrete throughout their empire, leaving us a large legacy of impressive structures. At the fall of their empire, this technology was largely forgotten. Similar and even better performances only began to be achieved around the time of the Industrial Revolution, when hydraulic lime and later Portland cement was discovered. As explained in subsequent videos, these binders consist in artificially produced mineral phases that react with water to produce hydrates of similar nature to those found in Roman mortars, but with an overall solid volume increase superior even to the Pozzolanic reaction. In conclusion, we have seen that while Pozzolanic type mortars were first discovered in ancient Greece, it is in Imperial Rome that they found a large scale application. From this period, we have inherited many impressive structures that testify to the excellent performance and durability of these binders. Chemically, they rely on a reaction between water, calcium hydroxide, and an amorphous silica or reactive aluminosilicates to produce a new solid phase occupying a larger volume than the starting solids combined.